Hi everyone. Today we'll look at the paper uh, "Larger Language Models Do in Context Learning Differently." Um, so in this paper, uh, they investigate uh, in-context learning across uh, different model sizes. Um, uh, particularly, they investigate uh, whether the model is able to override what it has already learned during pre-training and uh, whether it is able to uh, learn new mappings between the uh, input and the label. So if you recall, um, in regular in-context learning, uh, we give the model a context or a prompt. And um, this contains uh, some instructions on what tasks need to be done. And it may also contain examples. Um, and these examples have um, inputs like this and also labels. And um, the uh, expectation is for the model to learn the mapping between these inputs and the labels. And um, then you give uh, a query for which the label uh, the model is going to uh, compute, right? So for uh, an example of the sentiment classification task, you have uh, examples, uh, positive and negative examples, and then you have a query. And uh, you feed that query to the, you, you feed everything, the prompt, which contains both the examples and the query to the language model. And the language model basically uh, predicts uh, a label based on what it has seen in the uh, prompt. So, um, so to basically investigate how much the model uh, relies on uh, the prior information it has learned during pre-training or fine tuning, and how much the model basically pays attention to the input and the label mapping, uh, the experiment they devise is to basically flip the labels, right? So um, for uh, the task of sentiment classification, the negative label is going to be flipped as positive and the positive label is going to be flipped as negative. And um, this is fed to the model. And the expectation is that the model uh, relies on this input and label mapping and is able to flip the actual prediction uh, accordingly. Right? So um, a sentence like a smile on your face uh, was actually supposed to be uh, the actual uh, ground truth label is positive. But then when you have uh, prompts with, where the labels are flipped, the model is going to predict negative if it really pays attention to the uh, input and the label mapping, if it's doing in context learning well. And uh, that way, uh, so positive and negative, uh, these are words which probably the model has some semantic prior from its pre-training. And uh, it now the model needs to override what it has already learned and uh, learn this new information from just the uh, examples. In the uh, other experiment which they perform, they have semantically unrelated labels. So instead of like positive and negative have some meaning uh, when it comes to sentiment uh, classification. But then if you replace the positive and negative labels with some random words like foo and bar, and um, they uh, use these uh, labels, um, foo and bar in the examples which are given to the model in the prompt, and then uh, they expect the model to basically uh, predict the right label accordingly, uh, as in the model needs to learn the mapping between the input space and also these label space, right? The labels now are foo and bar, and then it has to predict one of the labels. They investigate this, um, the, they, they perform these experiments on different um, model sizes and across different families of models. They look into uh, GPT-3 across different sizes, instruct GPT, which is uh, uh, instruction fine-tuned GPT, codex, um, Palm and instruction fine-tuned Palm. So, um, so for the uh, experiment where they basically flip the labels, the labels are only flipped in the prompt. And uh, when they are actually uh, looking at the performance of the model, they are still uh, retaining the ground truth label. So you should basically see that the performance decreases uh, if the model is able to flip the labels accurately. So um, and then they randomly uh, increase the amount of labels which are flipped in the examples provided in the prompt. They vary it from 0 to 100. 100 means all the labels which are provided in the prompt are flipped. So 0 means none of the labels are flipped. 
and um, ideally if the model is able to flip all the labels right uh, it would have um, 100 minus whatever is the performance of the model when the when no labels are flipped right so if the model has like 80 percent accuracy when no labels are flipped if you flip all the labels and provide that in the prompt then you basically expect that the model um, has 20 percent accuracy right and here what they observe is um, so these are the different model sizes right uh, and they observe that as the model size increases like the 540 billion model uh, the models are more able to incorporate information from the uh, input and the label space and then uh, as in they are able to more accurately pick up the flipping of the label and uh, they are able to flip their predictions uh, compared to like when smaller models like the 8 billion model is not able to flip its predictions as accurately as the bigger models are. So this is an emergent ability uh, seen only in big models. And this holds true across uh, different model families like Palm, Codex, um, and also Instruct GPT. But um, for uh, GPT-3, they do not uh, see this as in the model doesn't learn to flip accurately given like the largest of the sizes also it's not able to learn how to um, flip it properly. The next experiment where they use uh, semantically unrelated labels. Um, so the darker uh, bar here basically indicates um, when they are using uh, the labels in natural language these are the original labels and for a particular task and the semantically the lighter bar here indicates the semantically unrelated targets uh, for example for sentiment classification you can have a positive class mapped as foo and negative class mapped as bar and these don't really mean much so the model cannot rely on semantic prior it has learned during its pre-training and ideally if the model is able to pick up the uh, input and the label uh, mapping the performance shouldn't degrade uh, when you use natural language targets or when you use these um, semantically unrelated targets, right? Um, as in both the bars need to be almost uh, the same height or the, uh, both the models need to give the same accuracy, right? And you can see that uh, this happens for the bigger models, right? You see that both of them have the same, uh, around the same accuracy. Uh, but in GPT-3, you don't see that trend. Um, you still see uh, issues. Um, it, it doesn't really scale uh, as well as what we've seen in the other uh, model families. But um, in the smaller models, you can see that there is a significant gap as in when you uh, flip the, uh, sorry, as in when you use semantically unrelated labels, the model is not able to perform as well meaning that the smaller models uh, rely more on the pre-training, uh, more on the knowledge they acquire during pre-training compared to uh, the instructions which are given to them, the instructions and examples provided to them during in-context learning. And then they, um, they vary the number of examples per class and they find that uh, generally having more number of examples um, improves the performance when you use semantically unrelated labels as in if the model sees more examples with these unrelated labels uh, it's able to provide a better mapping and on an unseen uh, query and then they experiment with uh, two different versions of the models uh, one is just a pre-trained model like pre-trained palm and the other is an instruction fine-tuned model Right, where uh, the pre-trained model is um, fine-tuned on natural language instructions, right? Um, and you can see that. Um, and this first example is when they use uh, semantically unrelated labels. They find that um, instruction fine-tuned models perform better than their um, just pre-trained counterparts. So you see that um, in Flan 540 billion. I mean you can't really see um, difference with 16 examples but maybe with two examples you can see some difference um, in the um, 62 billion case you do see some difference between the instruction 
um, fine tuned and the non instruction fine tune variant. And uh, it's more pronounced when you have the uh, 8 billion model, right? Uh, you can see that the instruction fine tuned uh, variant performs uh, much better than its non instruction fine tuned counterpart, even though you provide large number of examples, 16 examples in this case. And uh, so basically, this means that uh, instruction fine tuning helps the model to better identify the input and label mapping. And then they repeat the label flipping experiment. And uh, here um, they see that instruction fine tuning uh, rely, makes the model rely more on the pre training and the fine tuning aspect versus. Um, reading more into what the prompt basically says, right? So here the no instruction fine tuning seems to perform better compared to the um, instruction fine tuned uh, uh, counterpart. And also you can see that um, based on model size, you can see that the bigger models are able to do the flipping more effectively like, like we saw before. And then they perform uh, linear classification. So here, uh, the model is given um, k n-dimensional points, which are linearly separable. Um, uh, in, uh, and they give k n-dimensional points, which are above a threshold, and k n-dimensional points below a threshold. The threshold as such is not given to the model, and you are given a new uh, point, and the model is expected to classify it as uh, being above or below the threshold. It's a binary classification problem. And then you can see that the model basically uh, performs well on a bigger, uh, with more number of parameters compared to its uh, smaller counterpart. Um, so this basically says that bigger models uh, generalize well on even unseen tasks because the model is not explicitly uh, fine-tuned for linear classification, but it's able to do that uh, with just the uh, in context learning, which is looking at the uh, inputs and the labels. So yeah, the basic uh, conclusion from this paper is that uh, smaller models rely more on the uh, knowledge they have acquired uh, during pre-training. Although it looks like uh, bigger models, seem, they, they should be having more uh, semantic prior compared to smaller models, but uh, the bigger models are more easily able to override their semantic priors. And um, they are also the bigger models are also able to learn the input label mapping more efficiently compared to the smaller models. And uh, instruction fine tuning uh, helps the model learn the uh, input and label mapping better. Although um, when you try to uh, flip the labels, you can see that instruction fine tuning basically. Uh, uh, makes the model rely more heavily on the pre-training and the fine-tuning aspect compared to uh, learning from the examples provided in context. <laughs>